Welcome, everyone. Again, this event is going, you can hear this event or in English or in Portuguese. Please select the channel you want to hear on the interpretation at the bottom of the Zoom. I will start the event today with the acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on the which the University of Wollongong is situated. We pay our respects to Aboriginal elders past and present who are the knowledge holders and teachers. We acknowledge their continued spiritual and cultural connection to the country as we share knowledge teaching, learning, and researching with the university. We also pay respect to the knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal coast region of the country. For our colleagues from Brazil, the acknowledgement of country is a standard Australian practice in events which recognize the place of indigenous people at the first coast regions of this land. We also promotes, uh, it also promotes awareness of the history and culture of the indigenous people and formally acknowledges indigenous people's ongoing connection to the land. It's not tradition in Brazil, but today is also about sharing cultures uh, between Australia and Brazil. Therefore, I also want to pay respect to the indigenous people of Brazil land and recognize them as the knowledge holders and teachers. The REN stands in solidarity with countries, partners, colleagues, and families affected by COVID-19. In special, we pay respect to the victims in Brazil. More than half of people has died and the pandemic does not abating. We know that we will only beat this thing with science, leadership, and a strong sense of community. Um, despite all the impacts of COVID um, around the world, today we use the technology to connect Brazil and Australia to discuss gender equity. The knowledge that will be shared today will be important to identify the focus areas where we can improve within the academia. Welcome to the Fostering Success for Women in Engineering, Striving for Gender Equity event. I am Maina Portela Garcia. I'm a research fellow here at the University of Wollongong. I will moderate this event, uh, and it's my pleasure uh, sharing the moderation with Professor Dr. Maria Arminga from Brazil, coordinator of USP Women's Office. Later on, I will formally introduce her and give her the opportunity for a welcoming message. Let's begin. Um, to here you can see the today's agenda. So we have one block of uh, a perspective from UOW here in Australia, and another block, the second block is a perspective from USP, University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Let's begin our event with um, the network movie presentation. Como podemos combater a desigualdade de gênero na engenharia? How do we address the gender imbalance in engineering? It's a complex question. Our colleagues in ornithology have unpacked interesting insights. Until recently, it was presumed that male birds did most of the singing for the primary purpose of attracting a mate. For this reason, bird song has been studied almost exclusively in male birds. But breakthrough discoveries have revealed that female fairy wrens of Australia sing just as much, if not more, than the males. Even more interesting is they sing to communicate with other females rather than to attract a mate. And so to engineering. Just like these fairy wrens, it has become entrenched in our societal views that male-dominated fields are not suited for women. A realidade é que durante o processo de progressão de carreira, as mulheres enfrentam muitas barreiras, como discriminação, sexismo, estereotipos, responsabilidades familiares e interrupção de carreira. 
Specifically in academia, men are more likely to be awarded research grants and receive higher dollar amounts of funding to pursue that research. Investigations into the gender disparity found that factors preventing women from career advancement are due to fewer international collaborations and gender inequality in research funding schemes. Studies have also shown that even where success rates of men and women are similar or equal, women still receive on average lower funding than men. By promoting diversity and increasing opportunities for international collaborations, female researchers are more likely to produce higher impact journal publications and to attract more competitive grants. With this vision in mind, researchers in Australia and Brazil have created REN. Women's Research Engineers Network. A rede REN vai conectar desde doutorandos, pós-docs, até professoras universitárias. And act as a platform where women will be able to have their voice recognized, share knowledge, create new opportunities, and foster collaborations. This year, a series of monthly online events is planned. From seminars to networking, that will enable a collective construction of the network between research engineers. Se você está interessado em saber mais sobre oportunidades de colaboração internacional, como propostas para bolsas de financiamento, publicações conjuntas e parcerias de co-ensino, faça parte dessa rede. Join our network. Join our network. Join our network. Faça parte dessa rede. And together, we will sing. Make our voices heard. <laughs> and write the future we want e criar o futuro que queremos. Thank you. Thank you, Marcela, for sharing the video. I was really upset for not being able to show that. Um, we can now continue um, the presentation. I can see some comments on the chat. Great, excellent, thank you. We appreciate the feedback. Um, so let me just share again now my screen. So now that you know a little bit more about the network, um, REN, uh, we would like to invite you for the future events. We are holding one event in July in August in September, and another one in September. You receive more information by email, but also please feel free to, uh, to follow us on the social media and share with, uh, with your colleagues. The next event is the research exchange and network event. It's more specific about academics, for academics, but everyone is invited. All right. Um, so before we um, kick on on the event, I guess it's good to, um, as our speakers today come from two different countries and different cities, in order to give an idea of the localization where our speakers are talking from today, this slide shows some geographic information. I have selected Sao Paulo city and Wollongong city just for comparison. But I acknowledge that some of our guest speakers are talking from all the cities uh, in Brazil. Uh, so you, you can see that we are very, we are fortunate to have a very similar climate, which is mild and generally warm. Uh, the average temperature is around the lovely 20 degrees Celsius. Um, even though we have these similarities, we also set, have um, uh, we differ significantly in some aspects. For example, when we look at the population, so <laughs> Sao Paulo city population is 22 million, while Wollongong city is, is only 222,000. That means it's 100 times less. Um, the Sao Paulo state uh, has 46 million people, while New South Wales state has 8.1 million. And finally, in a country level comparison, Brazil has a population around 212 million people, while in Australia has 26 uh, million. 
as we can see, the population of Sao Paulo city is around the population of the entire Australia. Uh, despite our difference, uh, today we are here together and hope everyone here is curious, critical, open about this very important topic, gender equity, and become involved in the discussion. So um, I will now introduce Professor Dr. Maria Minda do Nascimento Arruda. She will also moderate the event with me today. Professor Maria Minda is a tenure professor of sociology of the Faculty of Philosophy, Language and Human Science. It's known in Brazil as Fifeleti. And current, she's the coordinator of USB Women's Office. Professor Maria Minda is a senior research at the Institute of Social and Political Studies of Sao Paulo. Her research areas include sociology of culture, social history of intellectuals, literature and arts, sociology of mass communication and sociological theory. She was until 2020 the Dean of the Faculty of Philosophy, Language and Human Science at USP, University of Sao Paulo, being the second woman to occupy this position in the history of the faculty. Thank you very much, Professor Maria Minda. I now hand over to you for a welcoming message. And I just want to let everyone know that Professor Maria is speaking Portuguese today. Thank you. É, muito obrigada, Mainá. É, good morning, bom dia. É, bom dia a, a todos vocês da Austrália. É, boa noite para os brasileiros. Eu, em primeiro lugar, quero agradecer muitíssimo a este convite, que muito honra a Universidade de São Paulo, a Universidade de Olongong. Quero também cumprimentar o professor Dr. Mark Freeman e cumprimentar todas as organizadoras deste evento. A Mainá, a Garcia, a Marcela, a Papini, e dizer que este encontro ele é um encontro histórico histórico para a Universidade de São Paulo, que hoje inaugura, junto com a Universidade de Ologong, na área de engenharia, uma rede é, de mulheres que estão, é, na verdade, criando... Uh, Uh, criando essa rede em busca da equidade de gênero no campo da, das engenharias, naturalmente, mas que envolve o conjunto da vida profissional dos nossos países. Por isso, quero dizer que é muito importante esse evento e agradecer este convite que muito honrou o Escritório USP Mulheres e a Universidade de São Paulo. Muito obrigada. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Maria Arminda. Um, I will now um, introduce our first guest speaker, um, Professor uh, Dr. Mark Freeman. Um, he is a speaker from UOW, University of Wollongong. Dr. Freeman is a member of the Atenas One Committee at UOW and will show us policies and initiatives for gender equity at, at two perspectives, one from the university, at entire university, and also from the engineering faculty. Dr. Mark Freeman is a senior lecturer at the School of Computing and Information Technology Faculty of Engineering and, Inf and Information Science at the University of Wollongong, Australia. He is Academic Programmer Director of INTI UOW in Malaysia. Dr. Freeman has published his work in journals and at a number of international information systems conference. 
He received a PhD from University of Wollongong, where his doctoral research examined the relationship between human computer uh, interaction and e-commerce system. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Freeman. I now hand over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, please just let me share my screen with you. Uh, so as was just stated, um, I'm from the University of Wollongong and I'm the first Associate Dean for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion within the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences. Uh, this was an initiative that was launched by the university at the start of 2020 uh, and each of our faculties have an Associate Dean in this role. So today I'm going to be talking to you from two perspectives, the University of Wollongong and our goals and mission regarding our Athena Swan bonds application and where we're at today and current initiatives within the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences around, uh, in, uh, around gender diversity. So as Marina said before, it's very important uh, as somebody who comes from Australia to pay our respects and acknowledgement of our country. So just as was done before that we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we meet, in which Wollongong is situated. We pay our respects to Aboriginal elders, past and present and emerging, who are the knowledge holders and teachers. We acknowledge their spiritual contribution and cultural connection to country. So as was stated before, this is something which is extremely important. And when talking about the issue of diversity, acknowledging the custodians of our land, which we're on, whether we are in Australia or in Brazil, uh, is something that we need to pay our respect and understand where they're from and where they're going to. Sorry, Mark. Um, sorry. Yes. Um, I think there's a little bit of a knocking sound coming from your microphone. Um, um, I'd like to apologize um, uh, because we're at the same at home at the moment. Um, I'm in Sydney and have to stay, uh, and there's a construction site next door uh, to my building uh, where I live. Okay, sure. <laughs> Apologies to uh, everyone. Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, I've tried to go to the back of the building uh, to try and reduce the noise as much as possible. So I'd like to start off by looking at the uh, UOW perspective first, looking at our strategies, the awards that we've received uh, in our mission to look at gender parity and gender equity, um, uh, along with a number of other equity issues uh, that the university focuses on and where our current focus lies. Uh, and then look at it from the EIS perspective of looking at our staffing, uh, our students, and then also our current focus uh, for all. So as part of the University of Wollongong's strategic vision, uh, we say that our students and academic professional staff uh, drive our success and then create our impact. As we move forward in a purposeful future, our people recognise the imperatives of change uh, and lead to the way of our transformation. So our university wants to attract the best talent and continuously to develop our work to create a reimagined workforce and our future. And I see that this echoes a number of the things that were mentioned in the video about attracting talent in the workforce and making sure that it is uh, diverse. As part of the university's direction, goal three of our strategic plan is about our civic university strategy. Our civic university strategy first dot point is about growing diverse and inclusive communities. These are both within our university itself uh, and the broader community in which the university operates, where we try to provide a safe and respectful and socially inclusive community with a common commitment to equity, diversity, reconciliation and human dignity for all. So part of this is really about driving equitable access for both learning, for teaching, for our research and tertiary education for all. So it includes looking at disadvantaged groups, 
or people traditionally that were underrepresented within our educational sector. And how we can provide a safe environment for these people to learn and engage, to celebrate their equity uh, and their diversity, understanding that the intersectionality uh, of individuals and that they don't just typically fit into one diversity group. We want to support and champion different programs within the university. And it's these programs where one of our key actions has been uh, the UAW Sage Athena Swan program. But we also have a number of other programs which look at the concepts of diversity, including our accessibility action plan uh, for people with disabilities, looking at our safe and respectful communities programs and making sure that everybody feels safe and connected to the community a reconciliation action plan uh, for uh, looking at uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander inclusion uh, and other programs aligned with human rights. Part of this is about also the growth of sex, sexuality uh, and gender diverse populations. And it's great to see that if you go to the university's uh, homepage today, you see that uh, the first story that appears is about celebrating pride uh, with a month of purpose about uh, belonging and acceptance, uh, which provides our new Vice Chancellor, Patricia Davidson, talking about uh, what she believes is important for the UOW community and for the community abroad in being having a sense of belonging and purpose. The awards that the university has achieved um, and focus on is our Athena Swan Bronze Award, uh, which is focused on the topic um, of gender diversity. We're also an employer of choice in Australia uh, for gender equality. We have the Australian GB, uh, GQ, uh, pardon me, LGBTQ Rec Inclusion Award, uh, which we received last uh, this year and we received it also in 2020. And the university uh, has a program called Ally at UOW. What these awards allow us to do is to focus on our support for gender equality and equality more broadly. It provides us to have a flexible workplace agreements that support all genders, uh, as this is a auction items within these different awards. It's about us removing barriers for the selection and advancement of people of all genders. And the university has applied uh, to the federal government to receive exemptions so that we can actually target gender uh, representation when looking at job advertisements. So this is a special um, program that the university is a part of and a number of organizations are a part of within the country, which can look at underrepresented groups and actually target job positions at those groups while still not uh, meeting anti-discrimination laws within the country. And also we have solid training practices in place uh, that allow all staff uh, to engage with training, to understand differences uh, and to become better citizens, to respect others uh, and to work efficiently as part of a diverse community uh, with a clear culture. So the University of Wollongong was committed very early on to Australia's Sage Athena Swan program, uh, which came from the United Kingdom. We were actually one of the very first uh, universities uh, in the sector to receive our bronze Athena Swan Award uh, and we're currently in the process of moving from a bronze award uh, to what's referred to as uh, signet awards highlighting that we've actually been achieving what we set out in our action plan from 2018 through to 2022 um, and once we receive uh, five of these awards uh, which have just recently been announced by the uh, SAGE committee, uh, then we'll be able to progress to putting in an application uh, to show that we've actually moved beyond um, having an action plan, but actually achieving some of these actions to receive uh, silver recognition. One of these key aspects was that in our initial action plan, they talked about having the concept of within each school, a gender champion. Um, as the university moved forward from our initial action plan, they saw that this really wasn't enough and we needed to have people dedicated in this role across all aspects 
um, of equity issues beyond uh, just gender. And so they introduced the associate deans for equity, diversity, and inclusion, and each of the faculties, these roles commenced uh, in July, 2020. And whilst these are only a fractional appointment at the moment, with our civic university strategy and our new vice chancellor strongly supportive, um, further changes in these roles uh, will be occurring um, at both at a faculty level um, in the future uh, and also at a university wide level of creating uh, committees and structures around uh, supporting staff and supporting equity issues. So the current focus of the university is about achieving our actions as we spelt out in our action plan and actually monitoring them. Are they appropriate for these changing times and how we can uh, continue to move forward and creating new actions and new items as new issues are identified and rise. We're moving from our bronze to our silver, as I talked about, and we have an implementation committee that meets on a very regular basis uh, to actually gather the evidence of what changes are occurring within our university. We have this focus driven aspect um, and with our new shared services model that the university is employed for professional staff, we need to make sure that it's not only looking at it from the perspective of our academic staff, but all within the broader community. The university has developed a number of programs uh, such as the Linking Women Network and the Leadership Program for Senior Academic Women as methods to engage with these underrepresented populations and make sure they have a chance of success uh, in achieving in a male dominated world. The university has launched a number of different grant schemes uh, that allow people to actually identify uh, how they've been working with regard to their opportunities that they've been given. Uh, and also uh, recently, one that's closed is looking at the impact that COVID has brought on staff where researchers could identify how they've actually struggled and how giving them a grant uh, in a particular area of their research can lead to them succeeding and becoming more successful into the future. Everything that Wollongong does is about developing a positive leading the direction to develop a positive workplace culture and allowing our staff and our students to achieve success. So as stated before, I'm from the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences. Um, and I actually come from the information sciences side, so it's great uh, to be able to work with a large number of different engineers across many different engineering disciplines and understand uh, their thoughts and their opinions um, across a broad range of matters. So we want to inspire our future within our faculty uh, through education, research and partnering with all. Within our faculty, we acknowledge that our community is diverse in gender, sexuality, disability, and also culturally. For us, diversity is about acknowledging our individual differences and the unique blend of skills and knowledge and perspectives that people can actually bring. And it is with this that we have a clear focus on our student and our student experience. So within our particular faculty, 21% of our enrollments uh, were women in 2020. And this has been a gradual increase uh, over the numbers of the past five years. We don't have full data for 2021 uh, as we have a second enrollment uh, starting in uh, just over a month. 23% of our commencing students in 2020 were women. So we can see that this is a slight increase, which is great, but we still have a long way to go. We also have um, that a higher level of women who actually complete their degrees across the university um, compared to uh, men. So this is great that when women actually enter a degree within EIS with the various programs they, they offer, uh, they're actually staying and they're not dropping out or uh, going to other areas within the university or other universities uh, to do other studies. Onshore, 
uh, we have slightly lower than lower enrollment numbers than uh, across uh, the university as a whole because our, our whole university numbers include uh, our campuses uh, offshore. Uh, but it is slightly higher than the Australian average for engineering, which is great, but we have a lot of work to do. And we realise that this work needs to go all the way back down to um, students from kindergarten, year one and year two, when they're only five, six, seven years old, because that's where uh, there's a perception that um, engineering and sciences and technology disciplines uh, should be for boys, uh, which is actually explained in some of the school curricular activities that we're really trying to start to embed these differences um, and trying to remove these differences opinion and these stereotypes at a very early age with the number of the programs that we're involved in so that everybody can be involved. We've got an increased number of undergraduates. Uh, we've got an increased number of people doing our postgraduates, but one of the great news for uh, 2020 was that 40% of our commencing students undertaking in research degrees uh, were actually women. And 31% of the completions were women. So this is up hugely on our numbers uh, back in 2016, where only 23% of our research students were women. And this is through a number of our staff targeting opportunities uh, by the way that uh, PhDs uh, looked at and focused on um, and really fostering talents um, of women uh, in their undergraduate and postgraduate degrees to think about doing research and what kind of career opportunities uh, this can lead to. One of the sadder pieces of news is looking at academics and their levels. So within the university, uh, we start off with an associate lecturer level, which is a level A, all the way through to a level E, which is a full professor. Uh, then we've got senior professors and distinguished professors all in that E category. This graph shows us um, in the blue and gray lines down the bottom, uh, the number of uh, women in these different levels uh, and how it declines uh, as we move from level A through to level E uh, where the percentage of men actually increased. And we're showing here both the Australian population uh, of engineering women uh, and also within our faculty. And uh, this is something that our former executive team really wanted to address was these differences and what kind of procedures can we put into place to make sure that these change. So one of the areas that we needed to look at these changes is that we needed to actually think about how can um, we target women and with our executive dean make uh, personal contact to all staff, which are at the top of their step uh, this year. Uh, and a step is when you the, have the opportunity to apply for promotion and say, have you considered applying for promotion and what kind of opportunities promotion could bring and how as a faculty, we could support, support all promotion applications. We have a dedicated committee that's recently been set up within the faculty, looking at gender equality, indigenous strategy, disability, inclusion, sex, sexuality, inclusion, cultural diversity and support for early career and mid-career researchers. And one of the aspects about supporting diverse populations is that all EIS executives have recently completed training on understanding sex, sexuality, uh, diversity, uh, and how this has an impact uh, of these groups when they're not included appropriately within the university and the broader community. So some of our current focus is that if there are no women applicants for job advertisement, then it's sent back to market uh, and people are recruited to try and focus on finding women to go uh, on short and long lists who they believe would be competitive and great for the position. So if a ad position is advertised and there are no women, uh, then, it's, then the university starts to question, well, why is the case? What is actually happening? Um, and how can we redress this issue? I talked about how we're supporting promotion within the faculty and targeting people personally. 
uh, we've got a consultative approach to our decision making. Uh, the university uh, has heads of schools within each department area or each school. Uh, and up until uh, next week, unfortunately, uh, all of these roles within our faculty uh, have been men, uh, but uh, there was a number of calls for uh, recruitment of these positions as they came to the end of their term. Um, and one of these uh, schools now will have a woman as a leader, which is great to hear. We have a woman who's our head of our um, education side, which is our Associate Dean Education, which I believe talked to this panel uh, and community uh, at your first meeting. Uh, and she's extremely uh, approachable. And if you're from the University of Wollongong and loves to talk to you uh, and is now the head of the women's uh, lunch, which is a monthly event uh, to provide support and opportunities and allow a safe place uh, for women academics uh, to discuss uh, and talk together. The university is also looking for a number of mentoring opportunities. Um, and recently we sent out a survey and the survey brought back results where uh, it was 50% of the respondents were actually women who were interested in mentoring, uh, even though the uh, percentage of women in academic roles is a lot lower than that, which is great to see that they want to progress their career um, and want to find out ways to actually uh, engage with the university to allow that to occur. So things to think about is what can we do every day to make a small change? Who can we talk to? Who can we discuss to really normalise the issues associated with uh, gender equity and gender equality? It was interesting that in one of the final talks by uh, our former executive dean before she went to her position uh, in a couple of weeks in New Zealand, she said that she was sitting at home and talking to her husband about her new role and said how great it was that she was going to a university where their senior staff uh, was a woman, um, the, the university's vice chancellor was a woman and now her as the provost is also a woman. And he turned around and actually said to her, well, wouldn't it be great if you came home and just said that, um, they weren't just only women, but it was something that you didn't have to actually identify that it was just the norm. So we need to think about how can gender equity become business as usual at our university and what kind of initiatives can we put into place to really drive passionate women that want to achieve. And it's great to see this network and I've had a chance to talk to some of the uh, coordinators from the Wollongong side are all early career researchers and extremely passionate about this. And Wollongong really wants to provide the services and the opportunities to allow them to succeed in their chosen fields and disciplines in the research that they do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mark Freeman. Uh, excellent questions at the end. I guess recognizing that we have a problem, uh, the gender gap is the beginning. Um, so thank you very much for the informative talk, uh, really interesting um, data that you showed. I just want to highlight that it's important to see the difference in the entry level, but also the, the numbers decreasing along uh, the levels for higher levels of women in OW, but also Australia, as you showed that. Thank you. I will let the questions at the end. Uh, so now, um, thank you very much for sharing your presentation. Now I will hand to, over to Professor Dr. Maria Minda again, so then she can start her presentation.